Hi everyone. Welcome to Taking Care of You with Mrs. Magoo. I'm Mrs. Magoo, and we've got a great show lineup for you today. First up on Vision Assist, we're going to be talking about a device that can help you identify colors. Then we're going to be talking about how we can incorporate coconut oil into our beauty routine. Then we have a guest, Dr. Joseph DeMarco. He's a chiropractor. He's going to be telling us how chiropractors can help us um, also how to avoid pain, how to avoid injury. He's also going to demonstrate how to shovel snow the proper way so we don't hurt ourselves. Um, he's got a lot of great information to share, so you might want to grab a pen and a paper um, in case you want to jot down some notes. Then after that, we're going to be talking about the superfood avocados. Okay, why don't we move on to Vision Assist. I don't see colors very well anymore, so in order to avoid any fashion faux pas, I have my Colorino. Now, actually, Colorino is the product name. It's called a color identifier, and this thing is wonderful. Um, you know, it'll identify colors for you for pretty much anything. So I have a few things here just to demonstrate. Here I have a top. And I'm going to put the, it's like a little camera. There's an eye in it, and you just put the eye up to the piece of clothing or whatever. Green. And it's telling me that this top is green. Now, I have a pair of socks here. Do they match? So I do one sock. Dark, red, brown. So it's reddish brown. And let me try the other one. Dark, red, brown. So this is reddish brown. So guess what? I have a matching pair. Um, and it doesn't just work on clothing. Here I have a plate, and it's white. White. And it just said white, and the plate is white. Um, okay, here I have a grapefruit. Light yellow, green. Light yellow, so the grapefruit is light yellow. Most people know what color a grapefruit is, but I'm just trying to show you how versatile this, um, this product is. Um, and this is great too. Like if you're going shopping, um, you know, take it and, and to help you um, pick out your clothing. And even if you're going shopping for, let's say, household goods like you know, curtains or throw pillows or sheets, it's always nice to know what color is the object that you're buying. Um, now you may say, how do I find these? Well, there's a couple of different options. There is um, the Carroll Store, which is located at the Carroll Center for the Blind, and they're in Newton, but it doesn't matter because they have a website and they ship things out. So their website is carroll.org. That's C-A-R-R-O-L-L dot org slash store. And you can just go on the website and see all the different um, items that they have. And you can also call them at 1-800-852-3131. Um, and you can just order things over the phone, give them a credit card number. Um, another place you can go to is called maxiaids.com. That's M-A-X-I-A-I-D-S dot com. Now, that, they do have a catalog as well as a website. Um, um, their phone number is 800-522-6294. Now, you can just call them and order over the phone as well, or you could just call them and request one of their catalogs. Uh, Maxi Aids has catalogs um, that have... Uh, devices for hearing impaired and visually impaired. Um, and both these places, um, you can just call them. If you don't know what it is that you want, let's say you're having trouble reading your measuring cups um, or you're having trouble uh, reading the bills in your wallet, like is it a 10 or a 20, you can just call them and say, this is the issue that I have. And they can tell you if they have something available that can help you solve that problem. Okay, next up, we're talking about coconut oil. Coconut oil has many uses, but today we're just going to be talking about it as if it were a do-it-yourself beauty product. Um, coconut oil has lots of vitamins, including vitamin E, minerals, fatty acids, um, 
It also was antibacterial. And there's so many different ways you can work it into your beauty routine. First off, let's talk about for your hair. Uh, coconut oil is fabulous for your hair. You can It can penetrate the hair shaft better than any oil out there. Um, it has the capacity to retain moisture. Like it just, it does not evaporate very quickly. So this way your hair stays moist and it stays soft. That way it will prevent any damage to your hair. So what we're gonna do today is, I guess you could call it a hair mask. Um, what you wanna do is you want to take three to five tablespoons of um, coconut oil. And we're gonna be using uh, organic coconut oil today because if you're putting it on your skin, you wanna use organic. So we're gonna take three to five tablespoons and we are going to, I use a glass measuring cup like this because it has a spout. So we're gonna take the three to five tablespoons depending on the length of your hair. Um, we're going to melt it in the microwave and just do like 30 second increments. You don't want burning hot oil um, to go on your scalp. Um, so once it's melted, we're going to just take it and I'm gonna pour it into my hand and I'm gonna rub it together. And I'm gonna start with massaging it into my scalp. Hello, Beulah. Now, if you have dandruff, coconut oil is for you. Coconut oil can help get rid of dandruff because of its fatty acids. And if you use it on a regular basis, it will keep it from ever coming back. It's much better than any of those anti-dandruff shampoos. So once we've massaged it into the scalp, we're gonna work it down to the rest of the hair. Now you wanna make sure you get it really good on your ends because your ends are the oldest part of your hair, the weakest part of your hair, and the driest part of your hair. So really um, saturate those ends well. Then what you're gonna do is you're going to put um, a plastic shower cap on. You're gonna all put it up, put the plastic shower cap on, and then you're gonna leave it in overnight. Then once you get up in the morning, you're just gonna shampoo as normal. And the treatment will make your hair so strong and so shiny. It's really, really wonderful for your hair. And you can do that, uh, that mask as many times as you want. There's really no limit. If you wanna do it a couple of times a week, that's fine. You can do it once a week, that's fine too. Another use for coconut oil is an eye makeup remover. So what you wanna do is you wanna take, I'm just putting it on a Q-tip, and then you just wanna Put it on your eyes. You're gonna let it sit for a minute to loosen up. And then you're just going to take a pad, cotton pad, and you're just going to wipe it off. And you'll be amazed at how it really gets rid of that waterproof mascara and everything else. And it doesn't pull or dry out your eyes. Um, another use for coconut oil is on your brows and your eyelashes. Um, where coconut oil is so moisturizing, it, uh, it prevents your hair and your eyelashes from falling out. So here again, what you wanna do is you wanna take the coconut oil, take a Q-tip, you're gonna put it on your eyebrows. Now, you don't, you don't have to use a Q-tip. You can use your, your fingers to do this, but make sure your hands are really clean. You don't wanna introduce any germs into your, onto your face. So you're gonna put it on your eyebrows and you're going to massage it in and then you just leave it in. You're also gonna put it on your eyelashes, and I usually just do this at night. I put a nice coating on my eyelashes and I put a nice coating on my brows. And then another thing about coconut oil is it stimulates hair growth. So it'll make your brows grow thicker, your eyelashes grow longer. Uh, another use for coconut oil is an eye cream. I only use it before I go to bed. And what I do is I take the coconut oil and I just tap it all around my eye, and then I have all night for it to uh, absorb. So I only do it at night, I don't do it during the day. Um, something else you can use coconut oil for is a lip balm. So you're just gonna take the coconut oil and you're gonna put it on your lips. But before you do that, you wanna make sure that you've exfoliated your lips. And I only heard about this a couple of years ago. I never even heard of exfoliating your lips. And what an exfoliation process does is it gets rid of the, the cracks, the, uh, the dry, peeling skin, so you have a nice, nice smooth palette for your lipstick. So I make up a, a, um, uh, a little lip scrub. It's very, very simple. All you do is you take a tablespoon of coconut oil 
you can warm it up in the uh, microwave a little if you want. And then I take a tablespoon of sugar, and it could be um, brown sugar or white sugar, it doesn't matter. You mix the two together, and then what I did was I just had this really small container, so I put it in there. Now I'm just going to take the, the scrub out, and it's kind of grainy feeling. And where's your lips here? I'm just gonna massage it into my lips. I'm going to leave it on for a few minutes, and then I'm going to take a warm washcloth, and I'm gonna wipe it off. And you won't believe how smooth um, your lips will feel. And you can do this a couple of times a week. I don't think I do it every day because your lips are kind of fragile. So when you're making up this, um, this lip scrub, if you like your scrubs a little bit more grainy, add a little bit more sugar. If you like them a little silkier, then add a little bit more coconut oil. Th there's no right or wrong way to do this. You know, however you, whatever you want the texture of your scrub to be, you know, just add whatever you need to get it to where you want it. Because you can also use the same um, formula for a body scrub. Obviously, you'd want to make more of it, but it's just pretty much one-to-one. -one. Um, and it is wonderful for a body scrub, too. You just take it into the shower with you, you know, just put it all over your body, massage it in, and then just rinse it off. Um, coconut oil is also a great, just plain, is a great moisturizer for your skin, your face and your body. Um, but however, if I had oily skin, I don't think I would use coconut oil um, because it is kind of heavy and it can clog your pores if you use too much of it. I don't use it on my face. I do use it on my body. So there's a few uses of coconut oil. There are just so many. In future shows, we'll be talking about coconut oil a lot more. Okay, next up we have Dr. Joe DeMarco. I'm here with Dr. Joseph DeMarco. He's a licensed chiropractor, and you're right at the uh, Manchester Athletic Club in Manchester by the Sea. Yes, well, first off, thanks for having me here today, Katie. Uh, yeah, we're at the Manchester Athletic Club, which is at um, 8 Atwater Ave in Manchester, and we actually um, have our own entrance from the club. You can go through the main entrance of the club to get to my office, or you can go right through from the parking lot. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's really convenient, you figure. You can go to the athletic club, you can work out, you can overdo it, and then you just stop by and see Dr. Joe, and you'll fix them up, right? I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway, welcome. Thank you. And um, tell us exactly what does a chiropractor do? Do you like crack bones? Well, we, chiropractic, our main thing is we're trying to fix misalignments in the spine. So mm -hmm. when, when we have 24 separate bones in the spine, and it doesn't take much for any one of those bones to slightly go out of position. And when that happens, uh, uh, nerves are going to be irritated, tissue is going to be inflamed, and it's going to create pain. And so a chiropractor's job is to correct misalignments. And we don't just correct misalignments in the spine. We can correct mis misalignments in any joint of the body, actually. Uh, in regards oh. to cracking spines, um, there is certain techniques in chiropractic where you do what we call a manual adjustment by hand, where you do do a, um, a, a technique where you're going to get a popping or a cracking Ooh. sound in the spine, except <laughs> the only thing, of course, I don't do that technique. I have a oh, different type of technique that we use. Do you? Okay. Yes. And what technique is that? I use a technique called activator. Mm -hmm. So we use a small spring-loaded instrument that's a very, very gentle technique, and you do not get the popping or cracking uh, type of uh, sound or, or, or uh, result from, from doing that. We don't get any popping or cracking when we do Activator. Oh, that's a good thing. Yeah. Um, what's the number one complaint you find from your patients? Definitely back pain. Really? Yeah. Um, you know, I know so many people that have back issues, including myself. Mm -hmm. I mean, what are we all doing wrong? Well, when it comes to back pain, I mean, it's such a common, common uh, occurrence. I mean, it, they, I think they say everyone at least once or twice in their lifetime is going to have some type of back pain. Oh, I mean, really? it's just a, a common thing. Uh, unfortunately, each year as we age, it, um, you know, arthritis sets in. It's a, it's a natural part of the aging process. Uh, every year, arthritis will tend to uh, get a little worse on, on, on adults. And so a uh, combination of arthritic changes of course, as we get older, deconditioning, people stop uh, exercising as much, they stop moving around, they tend to sit more, they're at the computer more these days, and so we have a deconditioning process that takes place, and so as muscles and tendons um, become weaker, 
the those those are the things that hold joints in position. So as they become weaker, joints are going to have more of a tendency to go out of position. So a lot of it has to do with just uh, day to day uh, taking care of ourselves. So we really need to keep up the exercising. That's like, is that the number one and most important thing? Between exercising and um, a combination of what we call like stretching and rolling, like foam rolling, uh, using massage rollers and massage balls to, mm-hmm. to loosen up the muscle tissue to keep it loose, and then stretching out that muscle tissue, that's a big part of it because uh, we do lose elasticity in the tissue each year as we get a little older, and that's that's tugging and pulling on the joints. So we want to keep oh. that tissue as loose as we can by doing some stretching and rolling and then of course exercising we want to keep the muscles strong around the joints to hold um, uh, to hold things in position so those would be as far as what people can do uh, just on a day-to-day thing is you know we got to get out we got to move around we got to exercise we got to keep the blood flowing we have to uh, stretch roll you know you got to make time for that type of stuff just Mm -hmm. like you make time to watch tv at night you got to make time to (laughs) you got to make time to uh, get to the to the gym or if you're not getting to the gym even at your house just doing things at your house to keep yourself um, you know toned and fit sure so we're all eventually as we age going to get arthritis Um, so there's really nothing we can do to stop that but we can help um, lessen the pain. Is that what you're saying by exercising and? Um, yeah, I mean the worst, the, the worst thing you can do flexible. if you're starting to get some arth- arthritic changes and arthritic pain is to just become sedentary. It just becomes worse. You know, the best thing to do is to keep moving. You know, you have oh, to really? keep, you have to keep moving. You know, and 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 you know, and probably for you know another uh, topic for another show. But I mean, and then of course there's a whole nutrition aspect involved. You know, mm-hmm. um, you know. Extra weight gain as we get older that puts more stress on the joints. You know, there was I read a study not too long ago. They said that for every uh, pound of body weight that you put on, it's like four pounds on the weight bearing joints. So in other really? words, if I was to put on twenty pounds, you know, you know, in the next few months from eating incorrectly, yeah. that's going to be like eighty pounds on my knees, my hips, and my feet. So it's a oh, four wow. to one ratio. So you know, taking care of yourself in in regards to nutrition is another big aspect of of how to prevent uh, back pain and, and joint problems. Mm-hmm. I mean, is it important that you have enough calcium and and vitamin D and eat your spinach? Sure, yeah. Does all that yeah, really all that affect stuff is, it too? Is is good and and you know when you're talking about calcium and, and bone density, uh, that's another thing that happens. We get older, we lose bone density, but a way you can offset that too. Once again, through exercise, there's tons of research out there that shows that weight training and and putting that stress on the the, the muscles will also put stress on the bones, and that actually keeps the bones from losing uh, density. So exercise, once again, even for bone oh. density, is so important. I never would have thought that. Exercise, yeah. I thought once you started losing bone density, No, there's, there's plenty of studies. They've, there's, there's been so many studies where they'll take a group of like elderly patients and they'll measure their bone density and then they'll put them on like a weight training program. Oh, yeah. uh, and, I'm, you know, we're not talking about like, you know, bench pressing through sure. just, yeah. just general general strength training just you know doing some exercises they find that um, they can uh, they consistently in studies will show that they can increase bone density by by exercising so uh, once again you know if, you, if you're spending your day you know and people are just sitting in the chair watching TV worst thing you can do for yourself really sitting in a chair yeah just yeah. sitting sitting's probably the worst activity you can do for yourself. Uh, anyways, it's just a bad, you know, it's bad for your back, it's bad for your spine, deconditions you, it tightens up muscles in certain areas. When you're sitting, your hips get tight because your knees are, you know, it's, you're bent at the hips sitting, you know, you, you put pressure on your lower back, you know, your hamstrings are tight because they're in this, you know, there's just, I can go on and on, but sitting is just anatomically and physically just a bad activity. And we tend to sit a lot. Yeah. Oh, I know. <laughs> I know. It's so comfortable. Now, you have a YouTube channel, don't you, that you, you actually show people exercises to do? Right. Yep. We have a uh, YouTube channel. If you uh, actually just search out um, www.youtube.com slash Health, which is the name of our channel, uh, we have a, a large number of videos on there that I show people how to you know, stretch certain areas of the body, how to do foam rolling and massage ball rolling on the areas of the body, oh, okay. uh, exercises for different parts of the body, for your core muscles, for your back muscles, for all sorts of things. We, 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 have, we put up at least one to two videos a week. Oh, that's, yeah. oh, that's wonderful. Yeah. I mean, because really, I would have no idea how to do, uh, what is it, massage rolling? or? Yeah, we call it, like, we, we use either those um, foam rollers, which are large, and we use what we call uh, massage balls, which oh. is uh, smaller. 
And I used to, you know, go over with patients how to do all this stuff. And then I know they go home and you forget. So now I just, uh, over the last year, now we've just decided we put everything on video. Oh, good so then idea. I can just direct people to the video. And then you can watch it two, three, four times um, till you're sick of watching me. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, you can watch it and then, you you know, so you don't forget. So I That's just find great. it's a better way to do it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So they can just go right to your YouTube yeah, channel instead of it. calling you, you know, at 2 o'clock in the morning. Oh, <laughs> I have this pain. Um, spell Ocramed. Uh, it's O C R A M E D Health. Health. Okay, Okramed yeah. Health. So yeah. they just go to YouTube, and yep. that's where they can find the video. You can either type it into the search bar on on YouTube, or if you're just doing a Google search, if you just put in the website, if you just put in www.youtube.com/slash mm -hmm. Health, then the channel will just show up too. Oh, so. great, great. Yeah. Um, now you brought in one of your implements of torture. <laughs> I, I just asked you to bring it in so that you could show some I of the. Actually, brought in my. Spine. Oh, there's Harry. And then, <laughs> and I brought in. This is what we call an activator. It's just a spring-loaded instrument. Uh, the thing about activator, it's it's nice, is that it does not hit hard. It just hits very fast. So unlike a okay. manual. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, so that's what you use to actually. This if is someone's what we use joint make, is out of right. whack. You push it back in. Right with to that. make corrections okay. in the spine. Okay. And um and so unlike a manual adjustment where. Um, first of all, I have a larger section. I'm putting my hand, which is large, on someone's spine, so I'm going to be covering two, three, four segments at a time. Activator is very specific. It has a small tip. I can actually get it specifically on the one joint I want to move that's out of position, and we give it just a light tap. There's no cracking, no popping. It's very gentle, and there's really nothing that can go wrong with Activator. It's, yeah. it's a great technique. I, I've had those used on me. They're, they're not painful at all. No. It just feels like someone's tapping you. Right. It feels, I always tell people it feels like we're just stapling you back together. <laughs> That's exactly what it's like. So. Um, so can you just show people with your um, little skeleton there exactly like what happens to people when their their joints go right. out of line and then how you use that activator to yeah, push so, it back into place? You know, as I was saying earlier, there's 24 just segments in the cervical, thoracic, and lumbar spine, never mind the hips, the pelvis, uh, uh, you know, the uh, up near the uh, top of the skull, and of course the shoulders, the knee. I mean, there's so many joints of the spine. And so we're on our feet, we're sitting. These are all movable segments. So it doesn't take a whole lot over a long period of time for segments to move out of position. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to exaggerate here because segments do not move this far out of position uh, without an injury, I mean, without a trauma. But, you know, say if a, if a joint is out of position, it can get stuck like that. Now, at that point, your body's going to react to that. Muscles are going to get tight around it. Tissue's going to get inflamed. Other segments above and below may act. If this goes to the right, this segment up here might start going to the left to compensate. And so a whole bunch of different things can go on. But so what we want to do is if a segment is out of position, as soon as we can, we want to get it back to where it belongs so that it takes the pressure off of the nerves and it relieves the tension in that area. And so what we do with the activator is if I have a segment that's, say, rotated over to the right, I want to get my activator right on that little joint there, and I want to kind of give it a little tap and move it back to the left. Oh, wow. Um, and that's all we're, we're doing. We're trying to correct uh, misalignments of the spine. Okay, and I see what you mean. Like, if you try to do it with your hand, your hand is so big. Yeah, it's much You larger. might end up moving a few more right. than you really want and, to. And there's a lot of great manual techniques out there, so I'm not knocking other techniques of chiropractic. There's a lot of chiropractic techniques. They all work great. Mm -hmm. This is the technique I like to use. I mm -hmm. find it very effective. It's very safe. And I, I really enjoy doing Activator. I find we get great results with it. Uh, but, you know, it, it, I, that's, that's my opinion on it. I like the fact that it's very specific mm -hmm. and it's very gentle and it, and it does a great job at correcting uh, alignments. And, and chiropractic is just one aspect of, of, of healthcare along with, you know, there's, there's, you know, obviously medical treatments, there's physical therapy type sure. of treatments. Chiropractic is just one of those. Uh, but I can say this, that... Structural problems when things go out of position are mechanical problems. And as a, thera uh, as a chiropractor or as a therapist, you cannot correct a physical problem with a chemical. And what I mean by that is if you have structural issues where things are out of position, I don't care how many pills your, your doctor gives you or how many cortisone shots you have, it's not, chemicals are not going to correct the physical problem. That it it a, has to be corrected physically, and you have to get things back in position. Yeah, that's a great point. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, do you find this time of year you see a lot of your patients come in with injuries due to snow shoveling? Oh, yeah. This is the time people start 
breaking the shovels out. This winter, we've been pretty lucky so far. I know, uh, I know. That's wood, true. Right? But, um, but yeah, I mean, uh, shoveling is, is definitely a, um, a major cause of uh, back pain in the winter. Really? Yeah. So that's why I'm so glad you're here. Would you do us the honor of showing us how to correctly shovel snow? Sure, it'd be my pleasure. Okay, great. Let's go outside. So here we have two different shovels. I have your typical run-of-the-mill snow shovel, and Dr. Joe has one of the ergonomically designed shovels. So can you tell me what is the difference between these two? Sure. All right, well, first off, I just want to say that even if we film this for the next two hours and I give you tips on how to shovel, there's no good way to shovel. <laughs> Shoveling is just a bad activity. So I'll try to make it a little bit better for you guys, but for the most part, it's just a bad activity for your back. Um, the difference between it is on a regular shovel, we have a long straight handle and whenever we're lifting something, like say if I was gonna go into the gym, do you wanna hold that for a second? Sure. If I was gonna go into the gym and if I'm lifting a weight, you always want whatever you're lifting to be as close to your body as you possibly can get it. So I wanna drag something up my legs in order to lift it correctly and have less stress on my spine. And that is the problem with shoveling, is your load is away from you. So you, you, your load is away, the heavy part is away. And so with a traditional shovel, a straight handle brings the load that much farther away from my body, whereas with an ergonomic shovel having the handle bent, when I, I'm here, the load is closer to me, so it's gonna put less strain on my back, and that's the idea of why they bend these handles like this. Oh, okay. So, um, let me show you how I would shovel snow, and you tell me how I do. How'd I do? <laughs> I give you a, <laughs> I didn't like that. I, I give you a C minus. Oh, you did. All. all right. So, so here's the thing with with snow shoveling. There's a couple things. Is um, one is when you first bend down to get the snow, you want to absorb some of the stress through your legs. So you want to have your knees bent and you want to do your initial scooping with your knees bent in this position. And then the second thing that's very important, and this is where people make a lot of mistakes and hurt their backs, is when it's time to, to, to throw the snow, they twist and throw it off to the side. And so uh, with now what we have here is a major problem for your lower back. I have a heavy load in front of me, it's away from my body, and, and that's gonna put stress on my back, but now I'm talking my, my, my lower back by twisting and throwing. So we don't wanna do that. Your best bet is to keep your knees bent, scoop and be pushing forward, uh, or if you gotta uh, throw the snow here, you take a step and then toss the snow like that. So it's best to uh, uh, not twist, it's best to actually step out and then throw. I wouldn't, I would be very careful on how much snow you add to the top of the shovel. You know, I know we all wanna, we all wanna get done shoveling as quick as we can, yeah. but you don't wanna be taking huge, huge scoops of snow and, and be shoveling. You're better off taking like lighter loads, keep it down to about 10, you know, five to 10 pounds on your shovel. Uh, but if I am using a regular shovel to pick up some heavier loads, one thing you can do is when you bend down to pick it up, have your hand out further down on the shovel as opposed to here. So the, it, when your hand is closer to the top, it's gonna make the snow feel heavier. So if I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna, be, I'm gonna be down a little lower on the shovel, and then I'm gonna throw it that way. But I, I, it's, it's a personal preference. I mean, just do whatever feels best for you and your back. Uh, you, some people may find using an ergonomic shovel to, to pick up and throw fine. I find it a little awkward. Dr. Joe, thank you for that wonderful demonstration and all that great information. Now, how can people contact you? Uh, you can contact me. Uh, our, our office is at 8 Atwater Ave in Manchester at the Manchester Athletic Club. Our number is 978-525-3800. That's probably the best way to reach our office if you wanted to schedule an appointment. So don't forget, if you have neck pain, back pain, uh, ankle pain, shoulder pain, you go to Dr. Joe, he'll straighten you right out. Coming up next, we're gonna be talking about superfoods and today it's avocados. I can't wait to get back in the studio. It's freezing out here. <laughs> Thanks, Katie. Thank you, Joe. Thank you very much. Yeah. Well, it was a balmy one degree out there and I'm not kidding. With the wind chill, it was probably 50 below. But anyway, thanks again to Dr. Joe. Um, now that I've all thought out, why don't we talk about avocados? Avocados are way high up there on the superfood list. Um, avocados have vitamin C, K, and E. They have more potassium than a banana. 
they have magnesium and they also have um, magne they have magnesium and they also have protein. Um, they also have essential fatty acids and these fatty acids help your body to absorb the nutrients from your food, which is a great thing. They also contain lutein and zexithin, which is very good for your eye health. Now, uh, avocados are fabulous for your skin, uh, whether you ingest them or you imply them topically. Um, what you could do is you could take, let's say a fourth of an avocado, smash it up, Mix it with a couple teaspoons of uh, excuse me a couple teaspoons of um, plain yogurt. You could throw honey in there if you want as well. Then you would apply it to a nice clean face, and you would leave it on for 15, 20 minutes, and then you would just wash off, and your skin will be so nice and hydrated, and will have a really nice glow. Now you can take that same formula with the yogurt, the avocado, and honey if you like, um, and use it as a hair mask. So obviously you would make more of it. Um, then you would just apply it to either dry or damp hair, and you would just leave it on for, I don't know, half hour or so, and you would just shampoo it out. So how can we incorporate avocados into our diet? Well, you can just eat them plain. I eat a half an avocado every morning. I just put a little salt on it. Or you can make guacamole with them, or you could slice them up and put them in a sandwich or on a salad. Um, you can also, avocado toast is very popular these days. But no matter how you do it, really try and get avocados somewhere in your diet. They are just so good for you. Well, that's all the time I have for today. Our quote of the day is, there is no good or bad, but thinking makes it so. That was said by William Shakespeare. So thank you so much, everybody, for joining me today. And please don't forget to take the time to take care of you. Bye for now. I'll see you next time. Oh, aren't you a cute little boy? Where's your mommy?